Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic today. Wow. Yeah. It's, I don't know where I picked that up, but somewhere this morning I saw something and somebody said, I am fantastic. <laughs> well, that's that's a good way to be, right? Yeah, that's admirable. I mean, and, and why not? Why shouldn't I be fantastic? Mm-hmm. I, I have an amazing life. The sun is shining. It's a little chilly. The sun is shining. Um, I have more work than than I need. Mm-hmm. So I'm busy, which I'm which I'm viewing as a positive and not a negative. Mm-hmm. So and I want to I want to share something before we jump into today's podcast, because we've talked a lot about me being stressed mm-hmm. and what causes my stress. And the month of February, because, you know, we're, we're done with it as this podcast comes out. Um was probably the busiest month that I can remember for me. And I did not get stressed. Ever? Like ah, busy, well, busy, yeah. busiest month ever? Sorry, I should have. Yes. <laughs> that probably question could have been taken yeah. two ways. No, yeah. I really think in terms of my schedule, it was, especially rolling from January, like from the second week of January, it's just all out, full, full, full throttle, pedal to the metal, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, but I rare, you know, if I got stressed, it was very short lived. Good. Which is interesting. That's great. So that's, but now I'm not saying I should keep that up. Like you need to, well, I should keep up not being stressed, but I should not keep up the pace. Mm-hmm. So I did, I did say to my wife, um, like two weeks ago, I said, honey, um, we need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what we can yeah. do. Yeah. But so, so today we're talking about, I asked the question, how are you doing? And and back, you're, this is way, 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 way before you were born, and I'm not going to ask you if you know anything about him, but uh, from like 1977 through the late 80s, the mayor in New York City was a guy whose name was Ed Koch. And, and he was a little bit of a character, and he used to walk the street saying, how am I doing? How am I doing? And it used to be like a joke, mm-hmm. but... Every leader really needs to ask themselves that question. How are you doing? How are you doing on leadership? And the answer to the question has nothing to do with our position, has nothing to do with our title. It has everything to do with the interaction that we're doing, that we're having with other people. So I, I set this, this to you. Um, what were your initial thoughts as you kind of read through it? Hmm. My initial thoughts. Uh, I, you know, I didn't really have have any uh, anything real crazy come into my mind. I thought it was uh, very David. Yeah, I was going to say it's very predictable, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't want to say that. No, you can't. It's, it's in know, line it's, with with you. With my philosophies, mm-hmm. exactly. And so, if a if a person is doing these four things, they are an excellent leader if they're doing two of these things actually maybe let me back that up if you're doing two of these things you're a good leader if you're doing three of these things you're an excellent leader if you're doing all four you are outstanding in leadership so let's jump right in Mm -hmm. the first one is are you equipping people and I, I think the the key to equipping people is I need to know how and where to equip them. Mm-hmm. So for me, the only way I can know how to equip, I have to get to know the people. You know, do we really know our people's giftedness? And and I don't know if you remember, but it, it Live to Lead, um, we awarded Lisa Watson from the Vernon H.P. Hood plant with our Transformational Leader of the year award and mm-hmm. and really Lisa had transformed that plant and what's really neat is when I get to talk to plant managers and people in other hood plants and they talk about what Lisa did at the Vernon plant but she brought a note a, a sticky note a blue sticky note that she had put on her monitor of her computer after reading multipliers by Liz Wiseman and it basically was um, are you helping them discover their native genius that's key Mm -hmm. because everybody's good at something and then you have to celebrate that gift you have to help them recognize it you have to celebrate it and you have to equip them in that 
Um, so here I go with one of my questions that I didn't tell you I'm going to ask. What do you think it feels like, or what does it feel like when you're being equipped? It feels like you're being set up for success. Exactly. Yeah. Feels like you're being set up for success. And I, and I can think back of people in my life that equipped me. Mm-hmm. They just, they, they gave me the tools to do the job. And when you feel like when you're being set up for success, you're going to work harder. You're, you're clearly going to try to not let this person down. And what happens is the leader then gets to just kind of sit back and watch this, this person blossom, this person unfold. So, then, so that's the first one. Then the second one is, are you empowering them? Now I'm going to turn my question around a little bit. So what does it feel like when you're not empowered? What does it feel like when you're not empowered? When you're not empowered. I, I feel like, it, you know, it's like you're spinning your wheels because yep. you don't feel like you can really do the things that you maybe believe need to be done because you haven't been exactly. empowered to do them. Right. And, you know, the reason why I could ask you both of those questions and know I'm going to get an answer is because I'm certain you've experienced both of those. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than knowing what we need to do, knowing that you know how to do it, and not being allowed to do it. Now, in, empowerment is not giving a 12-year-old keys to the family car. It's not. It's giving the keys to someone who knows how to drive the car, has demonstrated that they know how to drive the car. They've got the competency, the wisdom, the, 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 the decision-making to drive the car. So we don't just send our team out and say, hey, go have your, you know, knock yourself out, enjoy whatever. And no, when we're empowering a person, we are empowering them in a fairly defined area. And we have to make sure that they have the aptitude, again, and the skill set and the maturity to work in that area. Because if we don't, we just set them up for failure. So we equip them in their gifted areas. We empower them in areas where now they can, they have demonstrated that ability and then we can kind of let them go. And, and so somebody one time said, well, you know, how do you know if you're empowered? And, and, and I think you feel it. You know, you don't have a mic. If we're micromanaged, we're not empowered. Um, if, if, our, if our boss lets us make some decisions. And, we, and, and so what's it feel like? So this, this was something that years ago when I first started teaching for MACNI, I, I taught a class and one of the and it was on empowerment. And I asked them a question. I said, "So I want you to think of a day when you couldn't wait to get to work." So I'm going to throw that question out to you. Mm-hmm. Think of a day when you couldn't wait to start working. Tell me what was happening that day. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I think I have a lot of days like that, but they can all. They all seem a little different. Sometimes it's like when, you know, I can think of years where we've had um, events like Live to Lead or the annual dinner or whatever, Um, you know, being really excited to kind of see, I guess, see all of our hard work come together and, and, you know, have the event. I think that's one example. But I think also just a lot of my regular days, like I'm excited to to work on projects, to, to make progress on things. Exactly. Uh, to see you know, my team members, to see what they're doing, um, to work together. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you gave perfect examples of someone who is empowered. Mm-hmm. So when you, you and, and one of the key feelings of empowerment is a feeling of progress. Mm-hmm. There's optimism. You're, you're excited about going. There's, you know, I'm making progress on a project or live to lead. And I loved how you said live to lead because, those are days that, I mean, I love the live to lead day, but it is also one of my most uptight days. Not necessarily stress, but like I am so wound up because I want it to be a wow day for the people that show up. So there's a lot. So being empowered doesn't necessarily mean that you're not perhaps intense or, or a bit stressed. It's just you're making progress. Something's happening that's exciting. You're, it's 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 you you want to share it with people, and then if we think of days when we didn't want to go in, 
when it's just like, oh, no, not a day like this. And there's something happening in that day that's dragging us down. My worst days were days when I had to terminate an employee. You know, or or where I, you know, where I have to make a call to a customer that, you know, we had missed a delivery and, and I need to, let, or we have a quality problem and I need to call them before they find out. You just feel like you've, you're being dragged backwards in those days. So people need to contrast those, those two feelings. And if you, if you think about it, so if leaders remember what it feels like to be empowered, they should naturally want to empower their teams because that's going to drive that team forward. That team's going to run in ready to take on the world because they, they're making progress and they feel it. So those two things, equipping and empowering, make you a good leader. If you're doing those two things, you're good. So now let's up the, the level a bit. Navigating. Very good leaders navigate. They they, you know, uh, John Maxwell has a phrase, and I put it in my post that went out this morning. Um, leaders know the way, show the way, and go the way. They probably do it better. They know the way, go the way, and show the way. That's probably the order you should have it. And and he also said leaders see more than others see, and they see bef- they see before others see. So if we're truly a leader, and we're and the way you do that is you have to be constantly looking down the field down the road mm-hmm. what's coming what kind of roadblocks might be there what kind of opportunities might be there and then you begin to leverage those for your team so so am i navigating for my team am i am i personally laying out these paths of growth with each one of my team members do they see the path for themselves not just the organization and sometimes navigating actually has a person leaving our organization because it's what's best for them. Now, why would it, why would a leader navigate for a person and actually have them leave the organization? What are your thoughts? Because it's what's best for the person. Exactly. It's what's best for them. And I'll, I'll never forget, I had a, a situation, uh, and I won't say where the organization was, but I was working with a organiza- great organization, and I was doing quite a bit of work with them, and we were talking about employee development and growth. And, and they had transitioned everything in their organization from performance appraisals to employee development meetings with coaching and mentoring. And they said, you know, the reality is that sometimes you develop a person and they leave. And they gave me an example of a person that literally was being developed. They were on this great path. And then there weren't any opportunities in the organization for the person. So the person left. And so I said, Wow, I said that that had to be really, really tough for the organization. And then another person said, "Well, why don't you tell Dave the rest of the story?" And the rest of the story was that after a couple of years, he came back because the opportunity now opened up in this organization. Mm-hmm. So not only was he growing and continuing, and he saw that the organization was investing in him, he went somewhere else, gained more experience, and came back, which is always you know, and and it's that's not unusual for organizations to see that happen. Because if you're investing in people, they'll know that you really care. And that's that's the key. So if you want to be a very good leader, you also have to navigate. You um and, and, and one of the things too is, you know, with with what's happening in our world today with things so uncertain, now's when leaders have to navigate more than ever. We talked about it when when the pandemic was was in its its peak some years ago, you know, it, when it was starting and people didn't know what was happening, leaders had to navigate. And we're, we're going to have to do that, I'm afraid, again in the next few months at least to, to kind of help our people be a bit calm, more calm. Um, and then if you want to be an amazing leader, you reproduce other leaders. So now we're looking for people that are leaders within our groups. So what do you think are some things we might be looking for in people to kind of set them up as future leaders? What what characteristics would we be looking for in them? Oh, wow. I think there's a lot. Um, I think we, we talk a lot about character and, yep. um, you know, cl- clarity around mission. But I, 
in line with what we've been talking about today, um, you know, if you've equipped this person, are they using those tools? If you've empowered, yeah, the, if you've empowered this person, are they, you know, taking full advantage of that and moving forward and making progress and making decisions? Um, I think, you know, kind of following these steps, it's like if, if they're kind of flourishing in those areas, that would yeah. be an indicator to me that, you know, they would be a strong leader. Exactly. Yeah. Are they, and I love how you put that. Are they using the tools we gave them? You know, are they, are they exercising themselves in the areas where we have empowered them? Are they working the path down the journey that we've navigated for them? If that's the case, these are your future leaders. Mm -hmm. And then what we have to do is we have to, and we've, we've did some podcasts about this in the past, maybe, you know, a couple years ago, we invite them to the table. We let them see what's going on at our level in the organization. And we begin to even invest at a higher level with them. So if we kind of think about it, when we get to the reproducing phase, we now go back to almost step one, which is equipping. Now we're equipping them at a different level. And we're, in, we're empowering them at a different level. And we're letting them begin to, to navigate with us. And, and part of the thing that we do at this level is now we ask them, who do you see within the organization? that we should be investing in. Where do you see giftedness in others? And it just begins this beautiful process of developing more and more leaders. And the reason that we need this is our organizations need to grow and they can't grow with just us as leaders. Mm -hmm. We need lots. Our society needs lots of leaders. You know, our communities need lots of leaders. And I love how you said we start with character. It is the foundation of leadership is character. If you don't have leaders, if you don't have character, you're not a leader. You may be causing chaos and you may be you may be capitalizing on the chaos that you cause. I've seen people do that where they create a tremendous amount of chaos and then they capitalize in that moment. That's not leadership by any means because because the organization and the people aren't better for them being there. So then I did put this one thing that I think is key and is you can't do any of these things unless you're growing daily. So that's the key. It's kind of a sobering thing. Are mm -hmm. we growing daily? And are we focusing on our growth daily? Because if we don't, you, well, you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So those were just some of my key thoughts on those four areas. Any questions that you might have for me? Hmm. So my question is for in these four areas, is it like a hierarchy? Do you start at the ground level with equipping the move to empowering? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think you do. Because mm -hmm. I look at the equipping as I'm giving him the tools. Mm -hmm. Now I want and I train them. So I'm I'm giving him the tools, I'm showing them how to use the tools, or I'm getting them the training to use the tools. Now I empower them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you know, and I've used the example in the past, who do I let drive my wooden boat? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't let just anybody drive my wooden boat. Now, I want to I want to pick up on something here. Just because somebody knows how doesn't mean they won't bump into things from time to time. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've bumped my boat into things and I know how to use it. So we can't we're not talking about having perfection before we empower. But, yeah, so we give them the tools. We've empowered them. And then we begin to navigate for them mm -hmm. and help them see and kind of find places for them to expand. Yeah, there is a hierarchy in it. Yeah. And it's, and, but it, I, you know, it's also ongoing. It's not like, yes. Oh, I equipped them, check the box. Right. You know, I, I think uh, it's important to, to listen, you know, with coming back to your question to me about how to know if someone's, you know, ready to, to move into a, a leadership role or um, right. that fourth step there. But, I think part of that too is also, you know, I know my original answer was that they're using the tools that they gave you, but also that if you gave them the wrong tools, that that they're able to communicate that with you. Oh, that, yes. You know, I like they that. feel comfortable enough to say, like, hey, Dave, like this was really great, but it wasn't actually what I needed. Yeah, this didn't work. Uh, right. You know, I, I think this might be a better option. 
Yeah, oh, that's that's very good. Yeah, and and I love that. You know, there it's it's this continuous process. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, with a feedback loop. You know, now I start going into my manufacturing process, the plan, do, act, check. You know, mm-hmm. adjust type thing. Um, but that's really what it is, and 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 so I think we can, and we can use this. I, I don't want to make it sound like leadership is parenting, but it's the same thing as we do with our kids, mm-hmm. and our kids. You know, you're seeing that now with young children, and I've seen it now with children who have children, that the process continues, you know, where it's just at different levels. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you get to a point where you realize now I'm no longer, you know, is intimately involved and I'm more like the mentor, Mm -hmm. the kind of coaches, and I'm there if they need me. But yeah, I, I love that, that that's a continuous process. Anything else that you can think of? That's all I got. Do you have have any uh, ideas for next week? Ah, I do. But I can't say it because I'm not certain of it. How's that? Okay. Well, so <laughs> I that reminds me of something funny that Lena said to me yesterday. I asked her a question, and she said, "I could, but I can't." <laughs> I could, but I can't. So I think you so just gave just, me an "I could, I but I can't." Lena. I could, but I can't. And, and the reason I can't is because I'm going to be doing a lot of learning over the next well, probably 24 hours because mm-hmm. I'm doing a trip. So mm-hmm. I'm going going somewhere and back. I'm going to be spending over eight hours total in a car, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be doing a lot of learning. I actually bought a book just for this purpose. Like I heard a podcast. I fell in love with it. I bought the book. I ordered the audio book as well, and I, I don't want to – I can't spoil the surprise. How's okay. That? Sounds good. But it'll be good. I promise. So any hey are you do you have any special activities as winter is winding down? No, the only two remaining items on our list for winter uh are my birthday and mm. to make our spring list. So All right. Uh, we know, you know, my birthday will will come around whether I want it to or not, so that'll happen. <laughs> and <laughs> um well, then we'll yeah, we just have to make our our spring list and we have started talking about our garden wow. and, our, you know, planning our garden. That is so garden. exciting. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I know that, you know, and what I love is you're building the anticipation mm-hmm. for the season to come. That's awesome. Well, I'm still hoping to ski a few more times before the snow goes away. Mm-hmm. So that's my goal. And then I'll jump right into spring with both feet. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm-hmm.